preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Eternal God, we thank you for your goodness towards us. We are here, and it's because of your grace and mercy. As we sing, we ask that you please accept our worship. Send your Holy Spirit to bless our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lift up the trumpet yes, and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Oh, yes, he's coming again. He's coming again. Jesus is coming again. Echo. Echo. Jesus is coming again, coming in glory, coming in glory, the Lamb the that, Lamb was, slain. that was slain, Jesus, Jesus is coming again. again, everybody, coming again, coming again, Jesus is coming again, he brings a birth and the power. Jesus is coming again. Tempest and whirlwinds, the anthems roll on. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations. Nations are angry, by this we do know, Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro, Jesus is coming again. Everybody sing now. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, we're going to do the chorus again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Do you believe that? Yeah. Amen. We're now going to continue singing song number 12, song number one, two, 
Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts on full like floods before thee, hail thee as the sun above. Come on. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround me, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of Fields and forest, hills and mountain, blossoming meadows, flashing seas, chanting birds and flowing fountains, call us to rejoice in thee. Ladies, thou art giving and ladies giving ever blessing. Spring of the joy of living, ocean depth. I can't hear the man. I only hear in me. Come on, man. Thou the Father, Christ the Brother, all who live in love are Everybody thine. Come in. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy. Divine. Amen. We're going to sing song number two, two, three. Song number two, two, three. Crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns. The lamb upon his throne. Crowned him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drown, all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. King through all eternity. Crown him the Lord. Crown him the Lord of love. Behold his hands and side. Those wounds yet visible above in beauty glorified. No angel in the sky. So great. Crown him the Lord of peace. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways from pole to pole that was made cease, and all be prayer and praise. His reign shall know no end, and round his Feet, fair flowers of paradise extend their fragrance ever sweet. Crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of the rolling spirits. In ever peace of life, O 
Heavenly Father, tonight, Lord, we come knowing, Lord, we come believing that you are here with us tonight, Lord. Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit is even with those who are on their way. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight that your Holy Spirit would go forth mightily and would touch each and every member, each and every person that is brought here tonight. Lord, even the speaker that you have given unto us, Lord. 
Lord, we know that even now that your Holy Spirit is administering unto him so that he can administer unto us. And so, Father, tonight we lift up everything before you, knowing that you are God and that you are here to take full charge and control and to revive us and to energize us, O Lord. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
your might The one who's seen you through before Is still able Let's pray. Father, as we get into the word tonight, pray that you would be with us and bless us as we, we open our hearts. Interestingly, we are, we are weak and sinful and we do not even have the strength to open ourselves to you like David cried out to you. Purge me with hyssop and I would be clean. Wash me, be whiter than snow. We have to ask you to do the job for us. Do it tonight, we pray. We give you permission to do it. We thank you that you are not a God who would barge in like rulers on this earth who barge in and take over. You ask us to invite you. You say, come, let us reason. You invite us. You are a God, the God. You have principle. You give us choice even though you offer us the best. You give us choice. Choose ye this day. You say to us, we choose you. We pray that you would do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. In Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, it slipped me. Forgive me. Is there anyone here tonight for the first time? Could you just give me a wave? Hi, son. How are you doing? Good to see you. First time you're coming? I, you know, I just love children. 
Children don't have to sit and wait and wonder, you know, like, why are you asking that, you know? Children, you know, first time, what's your name, son? Stand up and shout it out. What's your name? Kishon? Hi, Kishon. You good? My name is Andy. My professional name is Pastor Manzano. Okay? You could get, call me, you could call me Andy, but say Pastor Andy. Okay? So you get to call me Andy. All right? And where I come from, some children, oh, maybe this should, should work for you better. Uh, my surname is Manzano, which is um, Portuguese, Spanish. Okay? Manzano is actually plural of manzana, which is Spanish for apple. And manzano actually means apple trees. Okay? That's what they tell me. So I make it easy on you. If I tell you my name is Pastor Manzano, that's going to be real trouble. Right? You tie up your tongue. So you get, say Pastor Apple. That's only for the children. Okay? Okay? Kishon? Pastor Apple. Okay? Call me. Call me. Stand up and call me. Hey, Kishon, how are you doing? In Jesus' name. Anyone else here? You, you just came in tonight. Good night, sir. Love and respect. Thanks for coming. I know you have other things to do. And to come here tonight to listen to this, this, um, this sinner saved by grace, I give you your respect. And there's a lady over there. Give me a wave, mommy. I saw your hand. God bless you. And somebody over there. God bless you. Anybody? Folks from St. Paul. You said you were going to be here tonight. Where are you? St. Paul people. Ay, ay, ay. My St. Paul people. I hope to come and preach at your church one day. The next time I come, but I'm not going out on that banister. Pastor, you ever been to St. Paul Church? The new, the new building? I went to the edge, the ledge there. I pulled back, Pastor. You know, Grenadian people like risk, boy. You take a risk. Tall buildings at the edge of the cliffs. Uh, amazing. Amazing. I respect your building, as I told you some nights before. Tonight we continue with lessons for living. And by now, probably you'll be walking with your notebooks. Take some pointers. Who walking with notebooks here? Ah, we have in class. It's getting warm up here already. Let me take this off. I told you before, pastors don't work for plenty of money. We have to save our suits. It's cheaper to wash shirts than laundry jackets, right? Amen. Hey, Pastor? Yeah. We studied so far in our lessons, three pointers. The first lesson we learned when Jesus said that if we listen to his words and we, we follow them, we are building our house, life on a rock and so, lesson one, we learned that we need to live by God's word. Lesson two, we learned when the man was let down from the roof, even though he was sick, Jesus told him, your sins are forgiven. And what Jesus was actually saying is that the human need, the greatest need we have is for forgiveness of sins. Not, not, not money. Now, I did hear pastor pray for people who want spouses and money and all of that, job and all of that. That is good, but our greatest need is to have our sin problem solved. Jesus says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the what? Kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all the other things, they come with a trail. You see, if you, if you serve the king, you get the provision from the kingdom. The king takes care of his subjects. Are, are we together? So we need forgiveness. And last night, we need to obey God's law. We need to obey. When the prodigal came home, he told the father, I want to be a servant. I'm not worthy to be a son. And I made it clear last night from the Bible that when people experience forgiveness, Pastor Isaac, when people 
understand forgiveness, they even want to do more than what God says. So anyone talking about, since I am a Christian, I don't have to keep the law, you don't understand forgiveness. Because a forgiven person try to make up, reverend, pastor, elder, brother. When you are forgiven, it's like I said last night, if you've been unfaithful to your wife and, and she still decides to take her back, what are you going to do? Now you want to be a better man. Talk to me, people. Yes, forgiveness makes you, make you want to make up. Tonight, our message is entitled Talking Points. Talking Points. Learning to talk right. Talking Points. We saw in our first message that the word of God is given to us to express God's will for us. Through the Bible, through the word of God, God talks to us. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse places, spoke to us, un unto us by our the fathers, the prophets. God spoke through the fathers, the prophets. God sent the prophets to talk to us. And in these last days, he had been speaking to us through his son, Jesus Christ. So that the prophets and Jesus came to talk to us. Come on, are we together? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Go on, preacher. So that when we listen to the prophets, it is God speaking. A prophet is a person sent from God to talk to us. Correct? Right. So God has been speaking to us by the prophets. The message tonight is talking points. But God does not only want to talk to us. God wants us to talk to God. You see, because God is relational. If somebody only wants to talk to you, but they don't want to hear what you have to say. That person is a dictator. Hello? Anytime somebody wants to do all the talking, but they don't want to listen, what kind of person is that? A dictator. Only their word count. But you see, when you're in a relationship, you can't have a dictator. You need to have communication, right? You, I give you my point, and then you give me your point. That is why in a marriage, you must have a man and a woman communicating. If there's a marriage where the woman must listen to the man, but the man wouldn't listen to the woman, that is not a marriage. That's a servant and a boss. Now, this is not family life series, but I thought I should say that. It's a servant and a boss. In a marriage, it's a relationship. So the man speaks what is on his mind and in his heart. And the woman speaks what is in her, her heart and in her mind. And you have communication. Eh, Pastor? That's a relationship. A relationship is based on mutual respect and communication. So God is not a dictator. God sent his word through the prophets. And his word through his son Jesus. And we have the Bible which is called what people? The Bible is called what? The word of? Correct. So when we open the Bible and we read, God is talking to us. But God doesn't only want to talk. God wants us to talk to God. And what do we call that people? Prayer. And tonight, since tonight is prayer night, I thought we should talk about talking points. Prayer. You with me so far? Huh? You with me? Not Kishon, you my sister. Yes. My prayer esteem leader. We describe that as what people talking to God is what? Prayer. When we read the Bible, we hear God talk to us. 
And when we pray, we talk to God. And the Bible shows us that just as how God wants us to listen to God, God is inviting us to talk to God. I like, I like, I like that. I like a God I can talk to. Even though, even though what I'm saying, you know, mightn't be what I should be saying, but God wants us to talk with God. And listen to the Bible. Jesus said in, in, in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, men ought always to pray and not faint. Jesus says, God wants, thank you. You know when you're preaching, sometimes you have your stuff prepared and then, and then, and then, um, and then something comes to your mind. You know why you can talk to God always? Why does Jesus say, we ought always to pray? Early in the morning, you could pray. You, you open your eyes, pray. All through the day, pray. At night, pray. Before you sleep, pray. You wake up in the middle of the night, you can pray. You know why? God does not sleep. God is always waiting, always on the job. God is the only security guard who doesn't take a break. God doesn't have a shift. You know, uh, come on. There are church people in here. It's God I'm talking about. God does not go off duty. So we could always pray. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, the Bible says what? Pray without ceasing. So tonight we talk about prayer. What is prayer? One writer, Ellen White, wrote a beautiful book called Steps to Christ. And listen how she describes prayer. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to what? Friends. So God is not a dictator. Prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse. Through prayer, it, we, we make our request to God and we have access to stuff. That's prayer. It is through prayer that we communicate to God. We express our concerns. God knows what we need. God knows, but God wants us to talk. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put it another way. Every parent knows what a child needs. Not so? A mother knows the child needs food. The mother knows the child needs this. You know your child wants to, to, um, wants to walk and all of that. A parent knows what a child needs. So why do we want our children to talk? Are you comfortable with a dumb child? No. You want your child to, to talk. Through prayer we talk. But as important as prayer is, there's a dilemma. God wants us to pray. Prayer is important. It is through prayer we express ourselves to God. But as important as prayer is, and as big as the invitation to prayer is, the Bible tells us we don't know how to pray. Now that's a kind of dilemma. Listen to what the Bible says. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. We go in somewhere. For we know not what we should pray for. As we ought. We don't know. We Sometimes we pray for something. And that is not what we need. But we feel we know we need it. It's like you're, you're praying. And the neighbor next door. Like where I live, I, I have a neighbor who is like a real, real test. When I'm coming out my yard, the car in front of my garage. You know, it's like, why must I have to ask my neighbor to move for me to come out from my gate? You understand, you understand what I'm saying, people? It's like a real test. So, uh, you know, and we go to pray. Hear me now. Lord, deal with our neighbor now. Change him. But here, 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 here what the prayer really is about. I am praying, pastor, 
for, for, for God to change the neighbor. Or I might be asking God, Lord, move the neighbor. Let him go somewhere else and live. But hear, hear what God is saying, Pastor. Hear what he prays. The prayer should, re should really be, Lord, I need more patience. You understand what I'm saying, people? Help me to be more patient. Help me to deal with this. Help that when I see this, it don't get me annoyed. Because sometimes I want to do something. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says we don't know what we're praying for. And just as no, no child born in this world knows how to talk, nobody is born with the ability to talk to God. We are not born even with the ability to talk to each other. Far more God. We need to pray. Jesus tells us to pray, but we don't know how to pray. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, Luke chapter 11, 1, watch this text. When he stopped praying, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples to pray. It doesn't matter how much you want to talk to God, you have to learn to pray. And some people feel they are prayer specialists. But nobody is a prayer specialist. You have to learn to pray. The disciples openly admitted. The disciples walking with Jesus told Jesus we don't know how to pray. That is a child doesn't know how to talk to his own father. Come on people. They were Jews. They had the scriptures. They knew God was talking to them through the scriptures. But they said, we don't know how to talk to God. The Bible tells us Adam and Eve would talk to God openly. God would talk to them openly. But after sin, we fell so far that we don't even know how to talk to God. And I want to let somebody know tonight how serious this is. You want to know how uncomfortable we are when it comes to prayer? Call somebody up and tell them pray. Come on. Call somebody. Have a prayer meeting. Call your family together. And you tell somebody, sister, would you pray for us? All of a sudden we want to, you understand what I'm saying, people? When it comes to pray, all of a sudden we're uncomfortable. All of a sudden, once it's prayer, we're uncomfortable. It's, it's as if when it comes to press, we, we've been analyzed. And then some people say, when they finish praying, boy, you could real pray, boy. I love to hear you pray. It's like there's some, some special thing about prayer. Are, are, you, are you with me so far, people? Yes, we, we have to learn it. You have to learn it. The, one of the most uncomfortable things you could tell somebody, Pray. Huh? I want you to sit down and think about it. Call a group together and tell them pray. Even pastors, imagine pastors. Call pastors in a circle and say, Pastor uh, Peters, would you pray? He's all like, what? Why didn't you ask somebody else to pray? Anytime it comes to prayers, like we, the rug pull from under our feet. Come on, people. And it's dangerous to come to the place where you feel you are a prayer specialist. Because the Bible says we, all, we don't know what to pray. We don't know. This message just kind of like makes some people destabilized. We need to learn. Look, read the text, everybody. And the disciples asked Jesus, what did they say? Was it three words? Lord, teach us to pray. The Bible says, we have to learn to pray. We have to learn to talk to God. And the Bible also gives us principles on this subject of prayer. We're going somewhere. Many people don't take time to consider them. Prayer is the most abused religious practice. 
Hello? Prayer is the most abused practice in religion. You know why? Because nobody seems to sit to think about the seriousness of prayer. And it's the most abused religious practice. A lot of people misuse this thing called prayer. Let me just break it down. People pray and anybody pray. I wonder if this thing getting a little too miserable for you. Come on, let me, let me just break it down for you. Prayer is the most abused thing. People get nervous to hold a Bible. Depending on how some people live, they don't want to hold the Bible. If you tell them, read the Bible, I am not a spiritual man. But pray. Everybody feel anybody could pray. I, have, I, I look at boxing sometimes. Okay? You go and see two boxers going to fight. A man going in the corner of the ring and pray and then go and beat up a man. You, you'll understand just now. A, a criminal going to put on a job Two criminals, a gang of fellas come together. They're going down the road to kill a man, pastor. They're going down and rob a man. And they get together and say, Father God, protect us. We're going down the road. You know that man down in Belmont? You are asking me. You know, we got done him tonight. Father God, protect us as we go kill that man. You, you, you all understand what I'm saying? People, anybody praying. People pray, they're going to fight war. They're going to play football. They pray. They're going to play cricket. Pray. And then, and then they come in with a hundred miles an hour to lick him down with the ball. You get the point just now. You get the point. Prayer is the most abused thing in religion. They wouldn't come to church. Because they feel, I ain't, I ain't living for Jesus. I ain't going there. I ain't really worthy to go in church, but jump in the car and you say a prayer. Bandit come into breaking the church to steal the, the PA system and he reached down the road and he pray. Don't let them catch me, Lord. Are you are, am I am I am I coming through? Yeah, yes. And when and when they finish, you know, watch watch Pacquiao and Mayweather fight, and they go on in the corner and pray. And when they're done here, when when they're done fight, beat up one another. Man, eyes swell up. Man, mouth bust up. And and when they finish and they go to interview them, first I want to praise God. I won't give glory to God. Pastor Gittins, you understand what I'm saying? Prayer is the most abused thing on the planet. Tonight you will go home and think about it. But Jesus didn't only say pray. Jesus gave counsels on prayer. Counsels. When you understand how serious prayer is, you take it seriously. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6, we're talking about talking points. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 7. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues. Some people, uh, uh, you call it gallery prayer, show off prayer. They're praying for people to see. Come on, people. You're quiet tonight, boy. You're quiet tonight. Talk to me, my man. Talk to me. Man. Tomorrow night is night off. So let's have two amount of uh, energy in here tonight. They're praying for people to see. Jesus said, don't pray like that. 
You're praying to God in secret. So your prayer must be between you and God. In congregational prayer, that's something different. In a group prayer, that's something different. But if you have to have prayer, don't stand up by the door out there and stand up and, you know, everybody wants to see you. That's Jesus' counsel. To be seen of men. That's Matthew chapter 6. When you pray, don't be as the hypocrites. Pray is not for show. Amen. Pray is not for show. Next point. When you pray, don't use vain reputations as the heathens do. See, God is not impressed with lyrics. God is impressed with your heart. And then you hear some people, Pastor, you come up to pray, Oh, almighty God who dwell in eternity, who stands between nothing and everything, and who call everything into existence, oh, great and marvelous God, you who are and who was and who is to come, you are the almighty one, and great are your name. And God said, say, get to the point now. Which does he really want? Are you in church tonight? Don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do because they think they'll be heard for their much speaking, the lyrics. God is not inter interested in lyrics. God is interested in heart. Heart. Talking points. I said that all kind of people pray on. Prayer is the most abused practice in religion. There are two things in religion, especially today. They are the two most abused things. One is faith and the other one is prayer. Faith. People have faith in faith. Pastor, they have faith in faith. They don't have faith in God. So hear the language now. Just name it and claim it. Come on, just name it. Once you believe it enough, you will get it. You know, it is you to do it. It is you to do it. You have faith in your faith. You don't have faith in God. So they believe if they believe it enough, they will have it. But my Bible tells me, God must answer your prayer. You can have faith like what? If God doesn't move, it will not happen. They have faith in faith. That's one of the things we abuse today. And the other one is prayer. Once you say it, just say it. Your heart could be wretched like what? But just pray. I was going down the road. And my car almost ran off the road. And, I, and it didn't run off because I prayed. No, it wasn't because you pray. It's because God saved you. See, you, you can't have faith in your prayer. You have to have faith in God who you're praying to. I hope tonight will make some sense to somebody. Yeah. You, you talking about, it's a good thing I pray. You must pray. And, and talking about prayer have power. Prayer have no power, you know. I'm glad somebody answer. If your prayer has power, you are God. Pastor, I'm a theologian. I don't make joke with that. When you see theology, you better say it right. If you say it wrong, the theology wrong. You express Biblical stuff with words. And if your words are not right, what you're saying is wrong. Your words have no power. God has power. And you talk to God who have power to work on your behalf. If your word has power, you don't need God. Come on. I just slow down, boy. The chest hurting. You, we, when you pray, you call on the God who has the power to work for you. Amen. 
Prayer is necessary. But don't start to exalt your prayer and put your prayer on the throne. I hope somebody hearing me tonight. I hope somebody hearing me tonight. And before we go, we need to find out, does God answer every prayer? See, we got bandit praying, criminal praying, wife beater praying. Come on, hello. You know some of the people who pray the most in this world, people? People who are in the, the, the mafia. Go Italy. Italian mafia. They're in church. They're in church. But they're killing. Hamas people just pray. Hmm? Come on. Come on. Israel is pray. See? Friday come in, all the people from who, 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 who raping and thing, they go on and they bow down. And Saturday, Sabbath, all them Jews go on and pray. And then they go out and kill. And when West Indies playing, and West Indies playing, okay, let me bring it another way. Uh, 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 warriors playing, um, Talawa. Come on. Pastor. So, Knight Riders in Trini playing uh, uh, Guyanese um, Warriors. Huh? Amazon. Amazon warriors, right? So here all them Trini praying. Be them. And all the guy and he's praying, right? And they got some Adventists in the prayer too, right? So, who, who, which side is God on? Does God answer every prayer? Well, let's see what the Bible says. It's lessons for living. 1 Peter 3 and verse 7. We starting at home. Pull up that text. First Peter, ye husbands. <laughs> we starting at home. You husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. And I had to do some study on this. And you know, it says your wife is more emotional than you. I learned that I'm married 43 years. Okay? I'm married a long, long time. Too long. 43 years is real long, Pastor. I married, my wife has been dealing with me longer than my own parents. Okay? So my parents was hurried to get rid of me when I said I get married. They said, oh. I married 43 years, Pastor. And in 43 years, I realized my wife. It's been more emotional than me. My wife just talk when she's emotional. Okay? And I had to learn that sometimes when she's talking, it's the emotion talking. Pastor Peter say all the time. And Sister Peter's hit him. Because she say no. But ladies, and that's what the Bible said, men dwell with them according to what? Knowledge. Because sometimes they say things, but they don't really mean it, you know. Like, let me even break it down for you. It, watch, watch, how, watch how a woman would operate. Emotion. Now, I'm in trouble with the ladies tonight. But let me break it down for you. Pastor Peters. As I finish here, guys come and help me and rush me out in the car. Eh? Pastor Enoch, Pastor Peters, listen. You build a house, right? For your darling wife. Everything inside there. Uh, you, 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 you love, right? You love. All of that stuff. She asked for a, um, a walk-in closet. A, a, you know, before a walk-in closet, and they, you, you build that for your darling wife, right? Uh, um, you know, tile it and all of that because you, you believe you, as a man, that's, that's my responsibility. Come on, fellas. Yeah, fellas, help me. You do all of that, right? And, 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 and uh, going downstairs and coming upstairs to wash 
it's kind of help on your knees, you know what I mean? So bring the wash upstairs and all that. You do all of that. You do all of that. You do all of that for the wife. Yeah. Christmas come in, she wants to change something in the house. Huh? Curtain, uh, you're there, right? And then, uh, and then you, you, you decide, um, I think you need a new car. So, all that. And she, when she talking to the girls, my husband is the best thing. My husband is the best thing. Right? All right. Deal with them according to knowledge. But here we're going on, Pastor. Next two weeks, she asks you, run down St. George's and do something for me. And the car can't go, right? Oh, yeah. Or oh, she asks you to, um, she has moved this plant from here and put it there. Put it right there for you, right? You, you leave and you're gone, you forget, you come back. Next time, um, Marlon, move, move the bot plant for me. Okay, I'll do it just now. You're gone and you come back. The third time she comes and she sees the plant. Nothing I just ask you to do. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. Come on, ladies. Don't lie. Don't lie. You just never do anything. Hello. You build a house. You add on a room. You buy a car. You do all of that. But she asked you to do one thing and you didn't do it. You just never do nothing. Fellas, if, if you know what they're talking about, say amen. Yeah. You think it easy? And hear what's going on with the man now. Hear what's going on with the man. Hear what's going on with the man. We don't realize it's just emotional talk. So here we. I don't do nothing. Hear you now. I don't do nothing. I just had on the room. I just, you starting to, to reason, but she's not reasoning. She's moving on emotion. And you gone now, and it's a big war in the house. You're vexed, you're gone out here. You're, I don't do not use the most ungrateful wife that I have, and blah, 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 blah. Because you're not dealing with them according to what? Just emotion. Just one emotion, Pastor Giddens. And later, later when you, when you come and you sit down and you, you blue vex. And she, the emotion gone down, she gone back like normal. And you come inside now. Sometimes when my wife get me vex, I ain't eating. I'm not eating. I'm, I'm serious, you know. You get me real, real vex. And you cook, you put it there. I ain't want nothing. Gone out and eat. Because here what I'm thinking, you, you ain't really love me because here what you telling me, here what you doing this, here what you doing that, but the woman at time, here she now, you still on that? <laughs> and and, and we're having a little family life right now, right? And here, here her, you know me when I get vexed. I just but I didn't mean nothing. Deal with them according to knowledge. Because if you don't deal with them according to knowledge, your prayer would be hindered. God don't hear every prayer. So the man who vex with wife and don't want to deal with the wife because of so, so, so. When he go and pray, God said, me talking to you. Don't talk to me. Because I give you my daughter to take care of. She, she funny. She different. The most different thing on this planet is a woman. Ladies, close your eyes. When she a little girl, so she one way. When she turned puberty, she different. When she get married, she different. She make a baby, she different. She get menopause, no, she different. You understand what I'm saying, people? And God said, fellas. Fellas, anytime a man 
know how to deal with a woman. He have the degree. He have a the doctoral degree in everything. Pastor, uh, we come in good? Come on. Husband, God doesn't hear every prayer. Know that. So the man who has a wife who don't know how to deal with her properly and getting annoyed because she different. God says, make back up with your wife before you come and pray. You have any revival to people? Make up with your wife. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Imagine you're going down and sleep on your tongue in your back and all that. Man, hug up the woman in Jesus' name, no man. You missing all of that? Hmm? I'm pulling cover and all that. Pastor Peters, I hope you're learning some stuff here. Yeah. It took me years to find that out. How you could tell me I just never do nothing. And hear them. Hear the next line. But you're always running down by the church. If they call you for this, it's board meeting, it's this, it's that. If somebody did call you, you're gone. Amen, gentlemen. Get a little sense. And before I close, before I close this section, there's one word all married men should learn if you want to have a happy marriage. Not sorry. Sorry is after you get in trouble. One word. Anything your wife tells you, don't sit down to analyze it. Don't. So do, no, no, no. One word. Anything your wife tells you, gentlemen, listen. Anything your wife tells you, Okay. <laughs> Honey, move that. Okay. I stop even telling my wife what I want to eat. She come in Friday, you know. So I had to talk everything before she reach. <laughs> Bishop, hear what my wife does do. What are you feeling to eat? Andy, what are you feeling to eat? Uh, what are you feeling to eat? I could eat a little thing. Here she. You know, I, I was feeling to cook pale, I cook it. No. <laughs> Come on, you're you honest, Pastor. Here, here. She asking me, what are you feeling to eat? But pale, I'm cooking. So I start. What are you feeling to eat? What are you cooking? Fellas, don't, because you're going to argue and say, why are you asking me what I want to eat? Why are you cooking pilau? So, what are you feeling to eat? What are you feeling to cook? You're safe. Deal with them according to? Knowledge. Tonight is a nice night, no? Having fun. God doesn't hear every prayer. Live in love with the wifey, and you're on your way. If you're not in treating your wife properly, your prayer is going to be hindered. Does God hear every prayer? When he spread forth your hands, I will not, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I'll not hear you because your hands are full of what? Blood. You can't be praying to God and then you're doing people wickedness. You're, you're bad talking people, slandering people, cheating people, and then you're kneeling down to pray. God said, clean up your act. When you come to me to pray, come clean. Your hands are full of what, people? Blood. And if you're doing wrong, you, your prayer is going to be hindered, brother. Uh, Latouche, I got you. I remember. I'm not seeing Annette. Where's Annette? She didn't come tonight. Tell Annette, Pastor, Manzano, Pastor Andy asked for her. Right? Tell her I'm missing her, a grieving. Psalm 66, 18. Does God hear every prayer? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know what is iniquity? Cherish sin. You know it's wrong. You're still doing it. And you're praying. God said, I'm not hearing you. You notice, watch the text. When you read in your Bible... Pay attention to words. That word is what? 
will. It is not can't. God didn't say, if you have iniquity, I can't hear you. No, will is something you do, you choose to do. God said, I will close my ear to you. I will not do it. Not I cannot do it. I can hear you, but I will choose not to hear you. And you know it's a good thing that God doesn't hear you when you're in iniquity. You know what it is for God to hear you come to talk to God when you're practicing sin? You don't want him to respond. Talk to me, people. That's grace. That is grace. Sometimes when God closes his air on us, it's grace. Because imagine you come to talk to God and telling God, so, 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 and God decides to answer you and you're living in iniquity. Read your Bible. The Bible says God was talking to Israel. When they came out of Egypt, God was talking love to Israel and the mountain shook. God was talking love to Israel and was lightning and thunder. God is talking love and there's an earthquake. You want God to talk in anger? God said, I don't, I'm not going to hear you. you know, it's for your good. Iniquity. Does God hear every prayer? He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Proverbs 28, 9. Your prayer is an abomination. The Bible says, if you decide that you're not willing to hear what God wants to say to you, don't pray. Because your prayer stink. Sua. You know, like when you pass by somebody in the morning and they haven't brushed them out yet. You ever hear somebody pass by somebody? And, ah, gosh, man. Bad breath. God said when you pray, but you don't want to obey, all God smelling is bad breath. Come on, man. We, you prefer we go back to the husband and wife talk, right? Bad breath. Listen to the prayer God hears. John 9, 31. Now we know that God hears not sinners practicing sin, but if any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he hears. A worshiper of God and an obedient person is who God hears. There are many people running around praying. Talking, believing that God here in them and God said, I deaf to you. For us to exist in this world, when we out of a relationship with God, for us to be receiving benefits and stuff in this world, when we out of a relationship with God, is not blessings, you know, it's mercy. He caused the rain to fall and the just and the unjust and the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. That is not blessing. That is mercy. And there are a lot of people walking around under the mercy of God and believing they are being blessed by God. When you're out of a relationship with God, El Alatush is mercy. You know why? Because the devil could wipe you out anytime. The devil could take you out anytime. And it's just mercy. To, to have food and you're not serving God is mercy. To be breathing and not serving God is mercy. To be driving on this road and being, being, being alive and not being crushed is mercy, people. Not, not an answered prayer. Somebody will hear me tonight. Prayer is the most abused thing on this planet. Because people are under the mercy of God and walking around feeling they're receiving blessings. If a man be a worshiper, that's the man 
God hears. Let's look at prayer. Because he has set his love on me, I will deliver him. Prayer is a covenant conversation. I will set him on high because he had known my name. Psalm 91. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him because he had known my name. Because he keeps my covenant. Because he listens to me. Because he does it. I will be there for him. Somebody in St. George's needs to understand that we play in with prayer. We live in anyhow, don't want to obey somebody in your house tonight in St. George's. You need to know that. We're living anyhow, drinking, smoking, running around, having adultery, stealing, doing all kind of stuff and dropping our, on our knees and praying to God. And God says, the only reason you're still alive is because of my mercy. You're running around with the devil. Living for Satan and then asking God for supplies. Talk to me somebody. Yeah, we're talking about talking points. Prayers that God hears. John 14 and 13. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that I'll do. If you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. You come with Jesus and you get your prayer answered. You come with Jesus. Church, quiet. Are well, you scaring me? Pray in Jesus' name. And he will hear you. Pray in Jesus' name and you will get it. That's what he says. It's not your lyrics. It's not how many times you do it. It's not where you go to church or whatever. You have to come God's way. Does God answer every prayer? No. God says no. Let me tell you what God's perspective is when it comes to prayer. You don't pray for people to see. When you're praying, you better listen to God. You have to make sure you're, you're in covenant with God. You have to make sure that you're in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the praying mantis. Jesus is the praying mantis in the Bible. Nobody could pray like him. And listen to how he says to pray. In Matthew chapter 6, he says, after this manner, pray. He didn't say, say these words. He says, the manner. A manner is a pattern. Talk to me, church. Follow this pattern. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. If Jesus says this is the pattern, inside of that prayer have everything. Well, look at the kingdom of God. The will of God. Our daily provision, bread, forgiveness of sin, brotherly love, forgiving others, giving us victory over the evil one. That's the essence of life. But before we go, I want to show you something. What Jesus says, we should focus on prayer. The first thing that Jesus says that we must focus on in prayer, he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Our Father which art in heaven, you are holy. Come among us and live. 
Coming down, because I'm ready to wrap up. Bring your kingdom. I want you to come and live among us. That's the first thing. And the next request, he says, what people? Thy will be done. The priority of prayer. As far as Jesus is concerned, the first thing that you need to tell God when you pray, I am willing to do your will. God says, don't ask me for bread if you're not willing to do my will. God says, don't ask me for forgiveness if you're not willing to do my will. God says, don't ask me to protect you from the devil if you're not willing to do my will. But we want to pray. Pastor, we run into pray, but we don't want to obey. First thing, are you willing to do God's will? Everything else comes after. Let me break it down for you. If you're not willing to do God's will, hear what you're telling God. I, walking with the devil, not leaving the devil, not doing what you want, but I want food. So hear what prayer is. For people who don't want to do God's will, it is, it is Ukraine asking Putin for food. It's Hamas sending to ask Israel for supplies. When you don't want to do God's will, and you pray, hear what you're telling God. I on the enemy side. And I want supplies to fight you. I on Satan's side. I want some food from you to fight you. Thy will be done. Here as the angels are doing your will in heaven. The first thing that we have to focus on prayer is submission. That's why God says, if you don't want to, if you, if you discard my law, your prayer is abomination. Because what, 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 what prayer is, somebody who don't want to obey, is God sending supplies to the enemy. To fight him. Tonight we go home and we need long we, we pray. But we pray with understanding. We pray with understanding. God's will. You have a wife. Treat her like a wife. And if you're not doing that. So why must God give you food. Strengthen you to beat your wife. Why? Why must God give you strength to beat up your children? Why must God give you money to take drugs to curse God? When we exist outside of the will of God, whatever we get in, rain, sunshine, is mercy. The people who God deal with in covenant who pray and God respond to their prayer are people who are willing to obey God. Are you willing? Thy will be done. The beautiful thing about this pastor is as serious as prayer is, Jesus said, pray without ceasing. Jesus said, when you pray, say, our father. He's father, he's inviting you to pray. But he says, before you come, make sure you put yourself in order. And then come. He's, he's, he's calling us, come let us reason, come. I'll fix it. But come in submission. And when you come in submission, 
to God. When you come willing to do God's will, you don't have to worry about house. You don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about, because Jesus said, your father know you need these things beforehand. So tonight we're going to pray. And we will pray in submission to his will. Lord, I submit. I want to do your will. And I'm sure you will take care of all my needs. Prayer is not about having your needs met. Prayer is about fulfilling God's will. Are you willing to fulfill God's will for your life? And the beautiful thing is, you are all the better for it. You don't lose. You don't lose. But I love this, you can't lose. Doing what God said. No.